Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about upgrade cards for your QNAP or Synology NAS system. When it comes down to it, when you're looking at upgrade systems, chances are you've been sitting on your network attached storage device for a number of years and you're looking to find a way to pep it up a bit, incre increase the internal performance, increase the external performance and ultimately improve the way that you can interact with your data. But more and more these days, we're seeing some buyers buy their very first NAS on day one with an upgrade card because there are just some features and functionality that are not available on day one that they want to add. Maybe they want to buy a solution that has a very specific feature, but that one key feature, such as 10GBE or NVMe, is only available on a higher price bracket. And a PCIe upgrade card allows them to buy a mid-range NAS with that particular feature that they care about the most. Now, both of these cards are available from QNAP and Synology respectively and are chiefly designed to be utilized in their own NAS systems, although the QNAP cards are supported for the most part, the QM2 series, on Windows platforms too, but we'll touch on that later. Now, both of these cards do represent largely what these companies are about sometimes. They do bring a lot to the table, but it's worth um, also stating that there's a huge number of differences between them. First and foremost, the release date between them. This is the QM2 NVMe and 10GBE upgrade card, and this is Synology's uh, 10GBE and NVMe upgrade card. But this was released at the start of 2019, and this was released in summer 2020. So between these two cards, there's practically a year and a half difference. And of course, that has made an impact on the hardware architecture that we're seeing here. The way the cards are built, what the card arrives with, and ultimately the overall performance. And you are going to be utilizing one of these cards in your proprietary NAS system anyway. So it's not like you're choosing between these two cards. This is about choosing the brand. And a number of you may not have taken the plunge on buying your NAS device yet. And hopefully this video will give you some idea about which brand better vibes with your kind of long-term plans. And that's largely what this is about. But let's talk about what both of these de uh, devices have got in common. They're both PCIe upgrade cards. They're both supported by uh, a number of NAS systems in their own product portfolios from each brand. They both support NVMe SSDs, those lovely super fast M2 key SSDs. They both support up to 2280 length NVMe's, but there are some differences there to carry on later on. They both support 10GBE over copper, so that's 10G base T, and both of them support 2.5GBE, 5GBE, and backwards compatible all the way down to 1GBE, not just 10. And they both arrive with support of um, desktop and rack mount systems alike, with different backplane adapters to allow you to install it in different PCIe slots. There's even silicon pads that you can apply to the devices in conjunction with their own heat sinks on each card to keep the NVMEs lovely and cool. So look, what can we talk about what they've got different? Well, how long's a piece of string? There is just so many different variables between these two. Probably one of the most abundant, obvious early doors ones, and I'm sure it's already on screen, was the warranty. The QNAP card arrives with one year of manufacturer's warranty. The Synology with five years of manufacturer's warranty. Now, I know there's a number of you that shop because of warranties. It's one of the biggest buying factors for you. Buy a washing machine and then bang, you get that three year extended. You get all of that extended warranties by paying extra. Now, I mentioned paying extra. The Synology card is most certainly the more expensive of the two. If you shop around, you'll be paying anything from 60 to 100 pounds price difference between these two cards for your respective NAS brand platform. And of course, you'll shop around, you'll probably get a bargain, but there's still no avoiding. There is a big, big price difference between them. But it's more to it than just the warranty difference. One of the biggest differences between these two cards is the PCIe connector. If we get both of these cards and show you on screen, you'll see that the Synology has got a longer PCIe slot than that QNAP card. The QNAP card there arrives with PCIe Gen 2 times 4 and the Synology card with PCIe Gen 3 times 8. That means that this card has a potential throughput between the card and the connected motherboard in the NAS or PC system of around 2000 megabytes per second. The Synology card has a potential throughput of 8000 megabytes per second between it and the NAS system. Now, 
the 10 GB on its own is going to, once maxed out, give a 1,000 megs. So on the Synology card, that leaves you 7,000 megabytes per second for your SSD cache. And on the QNAP, if a 1,000 is used by the 10 GBE, it's leaving you with a 1,000 for the NVMEs. Now, NVMEs already bring um, at least 1,800 megabytes per second read and write on them. But newer generation NVMEs, the read and writes are through the roof. Once you start moving into PCIe Gen 3 times 4 NVMEs, you are looking at SSDs that can give 3, 4, or even 5,000 megabytes per second performance. And don't get me wrong, that's mostly write, but read is catching up substantially fast and in the 2400s and 3000s. So that bottleneck of the PCIe may present a problem if you intend to max out both of those connections. Although both of these devices are utilized primarily for SSD caching in 10 GBE, it's worth highlighting that the QNAP card does give you the option to utilize it for both NVMe SSD caching and raw storage. So this opens the door to utilizing it for an area of NVMe storage space, which will give you a huge amount of performance, which you can then access over 10 GBE. Just remember that you are still sharing that bottleneck. Now, although the Synology card only supports SSD caching, it's worth highlighting that this device arrives with support of newer generation in terms of length and capacity NVMEs, with the 22110 newer style of NVMe supported. They both support 2280, but the Synology supports those longer ones. So that means you can use NVMEs with larger capacity or the NVMEs that use higher quality NAND chips. So you'll get the same standard capacity you get with um, 2280 NVMEs, but higher quality NAND, and therefore better performance, better data rights per day, better terabytes written, better durability overall. Now on the subject of the SSDs, that is another big area of difference between these two brands. The Synology, sorry, the Synology card arrives with um, compatibility lists that are incredibly light on details. Yes, it's a new card and it hasn't been around for very long, but you can't help but get the impression that Synology are making it abundantly clear that they want people to use this with their SSDs, their new SMV series of SSDs. They also have some SATA ones as well, but they've got an NVMe SSD range, both with um, a kind of error correction built in and a one that doesn't have it. And they're designed for real high level durability. They've got um, 1.0 data rights per day. They've got tremendous read, write and IOP speeds available for the most part. And on top of that, and better sustained IOPS and read write in their lifespan over five years of those SSDs than a number of other brands. They're more expensive, there's no avoiding it, but right now they are pushing quite hard about their SSDs being utilized in these devices. And that is a good thing in some ways. They wanna make sure people get the best possible experience they can, but the NVMe SSD range from them is only available in 400 gig right now. And that does seem a bit light for NVMe use. If you work out NVMe SSD cache as 10% of the storage volume, that means 400 gig is really only sustainable for um, uh, you know 40 TB, so like four 10 TB drives or something. Now, on top of that, if we move over to the QNAP card, the QNAP card has a wider compatibility in terms of SSD supported. You can use uh, Seagate you know, Samsung SSDs, Kingston NVMe SSDs, you can use them inside it. But if you read the specifications, they make it clear that they don't fully support it technology and they may not be able to give you the technical support on unsupported configurations moving forward. So again, something to bear in mind. Whereas QNAP does allow support of pretty much all the NVMe SSDs out there and with a larger compatibility list of tested drives. Obviously it's an older drive, you have to factor that in. But you get the impression that QNAP are going to be more open-ended about what NVMEs can be used, be they high expensive top level NAND endurance or standard, you know, 860 EVOs and stuff like that, or some of the WD um, SN750s. Now, how you utilize these devices in the most cases is going to be in a NAS. I've already touched on that the QNAP card can be supported in a PC system, 
but the majority of you, of course, are going to use these in NAS platforms, which have their own PCIe slots and therefore own PCIe release generations and speed. Now, if you look at the compatibility lists of both of these devices, the Technology Card arrives with a very small compatible range currently. They only talk about NVMe level support and they list about eight or nine NASs if you don't include redundant power suppliers and versions of the same device. Now, the previous NVMe SSD card before this, known as the M2D18, that card supported both NVMe and SATA configurations. What that meant was the system would only see it as SATA protocol. Sometimes the bottleneck there was caused by the PCIe connector being PCIe Gen 2 times 4 or 2 times 8, or the issue was the CPU wasn't really suited to NVMe SSD caching. With this card, Synology are only marketing NVMe compatibility and on those limited systems. We haven't had a chance to test this on uh, maybe a 2017 generation NAS, like the 1817 or the 1517, to see what happens. But I'm willing to bet the NVMe's will work. But given the PCIe gen, there's a good chance you won't even be able to physically connect it. But we'll have to wait and see. If it's not at least um, Gen 4, oh, sorry, Gen 3, we may be out of luck. Now, the QNAP card, once again, is supported by more QNAP NASs within their range, but a lot of those devices that it's compatible with, such as the, um, the 251, uh, sorry, the 453D, 653D, are PCIe Gen 2 x 2. So they're bottlenecked to 1,000 megs, which means this card will not reach its potential top performance threshold. So again, that's one of those areas in which these two brands are very, very different. QNAP released that card first, but the technology has moved forward and Synology have most certainly released a solution where they wanted it to be the best one possible, particularly with that PCIe. But by doing that, have also presented weird hurdles along the way with regards to maintaining compatibility and researching its suitability with your system. Ultimately, you need to go big or go home. And I think that largely summarizes both of these brands. They produce solutions and how they go about it when it comes to NAS as well is largely reflected by these two cards. QNAP is very much the experimental one and they do generally break a lot of the boundaries and things that we did not think was possible. They'll go ahead and show us that it is. Synology generally will not go into uh, an endeavor of hardware until they know that they can do it properly and 100% smoothly. And when they do it, they do it with that slickness and often an elite level about it that is out of reach of most standard NAS users. So it could be interesting to see which way you guys went on this. Maybe you already own a NAS and you've bought these cards, or maybe this video helped or hindered you choosing between the right NAS brand for you. Why not let me, let me know in the comments? There is a big price difference between these, but ultimately, if you already own a NAS, you're already locked in anyway. Click like if you've enjoyed this, click subscribe to learn more and visit the links in the description to both NASCompares and span.com to help you get the right data storage solution for you. I will see you next time.